It's the same as you as you're working on your own pace, making sure that nothing is causing pain or discomfort, as in joint pain. Muscular discomfort, entirely up to you if you need to stop and have a little rest to do so. If you want to keep going, keep it going. If I'm seated, I'm going to try and find my usual position to see if I can try and straighten myself up a little bit more, encouraging a little bit more space through the abdomen so that the diaphragm can descend and ascend easily, allowing that nice, relaxed breath. If I'm laying down, I'm quite relaxed with the mat to support me, so it should be quite easy to get that breath going. The legs. If possible, I'm going to straighten them. If I can't, I'm going to keep them bent. And then the arms, if I'm laying down, I'm going to turn them. Palms facing up, encouraging that external rotation into the shoulder, a little bit more opening across the front of the chest. And then usual scanning of the body, just noticing how the body feels. Notice the pressure at the back of the body. Notice if the head is centered just slightly off to the side. And the leg are the same position of this one feel different from the other is the pressure at the back of the hips of the same left and right side i'm not changing anything i'm just noticing where the body is and how i feel to begin with so that i compare and compare to something at the end of the session and then focusing on the breath see if i can get the nice and Deep a belly breath going. So on the inhale, I can feel the belly expanding. On the exhale, I'm going to let it relax. So see if I can try and calm the body down. Finding a more relaxed breath. So there's no tension across the top of the chest. There's no tension into the neck muscles as I'm breathing. See if I can drop the breath right down into the abdomen, into the belly. And then as I feel the breath, the body feels a little bit more settled, a little bit more relaxed. I'm just going to start to moving from the neck down. I'm going to start off with a little rotation. So I'm going to turn to look over one side, come back to the center, turn to look the other way. Come back to the center. And then turning the other way. So keeping the rotation going, I'm going to try a few in this direction, noticing if there is the restriction right to left side. Notice if one side feels maybe a little bit stiffer than the other. I'm not forcing anything. I'm just trying to notice the things. It's like I'm in the corner of the eye, checking that the shoulder is not pulling backwards. So I'm not turning my rib cage, I'm just turning my head. Then coming back to the center, I'm going to hold the head in the center. I'm going to write, raise one arm up, it doesn't matter which one. And then I'm going to stick the thumb out. So I'm going to lock the arm in front of me, sticking the thumb out. I'm going to try and bring it to the center. And then without moving the head, I'm going to start opening the arm to the side. With the eyes, I'm going to follow the thumb until I can barely see without moving the head. Then I'm going to bring it back to the middle. Then I'm going to stick the other arm out, thumb comes out, and then I'm going to do the same thing following the other thumb around. So just noticing if maybe I can see more when I look around this way, less. Notice if the head is turning, see if I can keep it still, come back to the center, and then I'm going to swap again. I'm going to repeat it just a couple of times on each side. Easing back to the middle. And then swap into the other side again. Easing back to the middle and releasing down. Relaxing through the shoulders, I'm going to retest the neck movement. So I'm going to turn the head to look over one side 
Come back, turn to look the other way. Come back. Notice that if there is any improvement into the movement. Then easing the head back to the center. I'm going to hold it to the center. And then this time I'm going to go for a little lateral flexion. So I'm going to drop the right ear down to the right shoulder, lengthening the left side of the neck. Bring it back to the center, taking the left ear to the left shoulder, lengthening the right side, coming back, and repeating the same the other way. Coming back. And repeating the same the other way. So same as I did for the rotation. Notice if there is any stiffness, any tension, right and left aside. If the movement feels a little bit more restricted going one way or the other. Making sure that I'm still, the head is still um, looking straight ahead. So I'm not turning towards the shoulder. I'm not rotating. I'm just the flex in the neck to the side. Two, one, ease in the head back to the middle, relaxing the shoulders, relaxing the arms. And then I'm going to go back to the arm. So I'm going to stick the right arm forward, thumb up. I'm going to try and line up the thumb to the midline. So see if I can bring it center. And then this time, instead of opening the arm to the side, I'm going to slowly, Bring the thumb towards the tip of the nose. It doesn't matter if you don't get to the tip of the nose, but what I want is to stop. If instead of seeing one thumb, you start seeing two. So I'm going to try and bring it towards me. So it's still one, it's still one, it's still one, it's blurry, but it's still one. If I can see two, I'm going to stop there. And then hold it. Five, four, three, two, one. Close your eyes. Relax the arm. I'm going to open the eyes. I'm going to reach that left arm forward, sticking the thumb out the same as before. And then same as before, I'm going to try and make the eyes converge. So I'm going to bring the thumb in slowly. It's still one thumb. It's still one thumb. It's still one thumb. It's a bit blurry, but it's still one. If it becomes two, I'm going to stop. Hold in there. Five, four, three, two, one. Close your eyes. Relax the arm down by the side. Opening your eyes. We're testing the lateral flexion. So I'm going to bring the right ear to the right shoulder. Coming back to the center. Left ear to the left shoulder. Again, noticing if there is any difference in the movement. Three, two, one, and releasing back to the middle. Then keeping the head to the center, I'm going to change the direction one last time, going with the flexion extension. So I'm going to Try and imagine to be putting the face of flat on the chest. So I'm going to try and curl the head forward. And so I'm going to lift the head off the ground. If I'm, if I'm laying down, I might want to support it with the hands. And then tucking the chin in, I'm going to try and lift it from the back of the head to create more space at the back. And then I'm going to keep curling the head forward. See so if I can bring the chin down to the chest, the, the nose down to the breast. And, then I'm going to ease back, popping the head back down onto the mountain. If I'm laying down, and then I'm going to look the other way. So lifting the chin up and towards the ceiling, I'm going to try and lengthen the front of the throat, looking up, looking back. And then I'm going to release back. And then again, tucking the chin in, see if I can bring the chin down to the front of the throat, the nose down to the front of the chest, opening up the space at the back. Then releasing 
and reversing, looking forward, looking up, looking back. And then breathing down. Last time, tucking the chin in, nose to the chest. And then easing back, lifting up. And releasing back, relaxing the head, releasing the shoulders. It's a little bit more movement into the cervical spine. I'm going to drop down into the thoracic. I'm going to start with flexion extension. So Keeping the arms down by the side, if you're lying down, I'm going to start lifting the chest up. So I'm going to push the breastbone forward, push the breastbone up. I'm trying to extend through the upper back. If you're seated, imagine to be able to put the chest on the ceiling above. If you're lying down, imagine to be lifting the back of the ribcage off the mat. Then I'm going to release, I'm going to return, push the ribcage back into the mat, rounding the shoulders, rounding the upper back, and then I'm going to open up and lift. So exactly the same as you just did with the head, tucking the chin and then lifting the chin. See if I can get the movement through the thoracic spine. So see if I can try and curl from the shoulders, from the back of the ribcage into that rounded position and then extend my way back, lift my way up, and then reverse in it again. Three. Two. Last time. And releasing back, We're releasing the shoulders, adjusting the shoulders, adjusting the back. From flexion extension, I'm going to go into lateral flexion. It's the same as I did for the neck. I'm going to flex it to the side. So I'm going to let the right ear drop down to the right shoulder. I might want to support the head if I'm lying down. And with the right arm, I'm going to reach down the right side as far down as I feel that I can flex. Then I'm going to ease my way back to the center, left ear to the left shoulder, and then I'm going to reach down the left side. Coming back to the center, and then onto the other side. So you can think of a gentle tension coming from the side of the waist, to the side of the belly, pulling me down on one side, and then holding me up on the other. If the other side doesn't hold, I'll be falling. If I'm sitting down, I'll be falling off to the side. So see if I can make sure that the chest stays lifted, the chin stays lifted as I'm flexing from side to side. So I'm not suddenly leaning forward and moving towards the legs. I'm going to imagine the wall behind me. I'm going to try and keep my shoulders and my head on the wall as I move to one side, coming back to the middle. Shoulders and head on the wall as I move the other way. Four. Three. Two. One. And release and back. Are we turning the body back to the middle? From lateral flexion, finishing off with a little rotation. So if you're laying down, I'm going to reach the arms forward. If I'm sitting up, I can reach them forward or cross them onto the chest, whichever you prefer. I'm going to take a deep breath in and then as I breathe out, I'm going to start rotating to one side. If you're sitting up, see if you can take advantage of the fact that there is nothing behind you and then encourage a nice turn. So I'm going to try and draw the shoulder back Turn the head to look behind the shoulder, come back to the center, and then I'm going to do the same thing to the other side. Turn to the left, to draw back the left shoulder, turn the head to look behind the left shoulder, and then back to the center again. So see if I can use that space, that 
better. If I'm lying down, trying to roll the from shoulder to shoulder to give me that little extra space for the rotation, following with the head too. So I'm going to try and look around as the arms swing to the right, and then look around as the arms swing to the left. Six. Five. Four, three, two, last one, and release the back, releasing the shoulders, adjusting the back, and then I'm going to travel down the spine, this time focusing on the lumbar spine, on the low back. I'm going to start off with a little pelvic tilt. So tilting the pelvis back, I'm going to press the lower back of the arm into the mat, and then I'm going to rock my way back into neutral. So this time, see if you can be aware of a little tension in the front of the belly. So I'm going to put a little tension into the belly to help me shorten the front and lengthen the back, and then I'm going to release and reverse it slightly. So shorten the front, lengthen the back, and then release and reverse it slightly. So feeling the hips are rocking forward and back. If I'm sitting up, exactly the same. So to see if I can think of a little movement that is creating movement down into the lumbar spine. So I'm going to try and rock back onto the back of the seat, for instance, towards the tailbone, and then try to pick myself back up onto the very teeth of the seat bones again. Then rolling back onto the back of the seat bones, and then coming up onto the tip of the sequence again. Feeling the belly tense into creating that little hollow shape as I go back and then relaxing as I come forward. Five. Four. Three. Two, one, and releasing back, adjusting the hips and releasing the lower back to the back of the pelvis. <laughs> From flexion extension, I'm going to go into a little lateral flexion again. So I'm going to get into the hip hinge. So if I'm sitting up, I'm going to try and hitch the right hip towards the right side of the rib base. So again, trying to work onto the side of the belly, side of the waist, to see if I can try and pull the right seat off the chair. And then with the left, I'm going to pull up on the left. So right pulls up on the right, left pulls up on the left. If I'm laying down, same as usual, the back of the pelvis stays flat against the floor. I'm just rocking it gently from side to side to create that little hitch. So feeling one side tensing to create that shortening, then coming back, and then the other side tensing to create that shortening, and then back. Eight. Seven, see if I can keep the legs relaxed. Six, is so making sure that I'm not pushing hard onto the feet. Four. Three. Two. One. And releasing back, resetting the hips back to the middle, adjusting the hips, stretching the back if you need to. And then from uh, hip, hip hit from lateral flexion, I'm going to go into rotation. So if you're lying down, we're going to get into hip rolls. So taking the arms out to the side, bending the knees, the feet and knees nice and close together. I'm going to start turning the legs to one side, rotating one way, coming back to the middle, and then to the other side, rotating the other way. So nice and loose, nice and easy. If I'm sitting up, because I'm sitting on the seat bench, it's very hard to 
create movement. So what I'm going to try is to turn the upper body. So I'm going to rotate the upper body to the right. And then with my left arm, I'm going to push the leg across to the left. Then coming back to the middle, I'm going to rotate to the left. And then with the right arm, I'm going to push the leg across to the right. So see if I can just deepen the rotation slightly by encouraging the leg to move the opposite way. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two. Last one, and releasing back, releasing the shoulders, releasing the back. Just a little bit more movement down into the lumbar spine. I'm going to start moving on shoulders and hips. So starting with the hips at first. So first, the thing I want to try and switch on the muscles that I want to be working with. So I'm going to start with the inner thigh. So if you're um, Laying down, I suggest you put something between the knees, even if you're sitting up, it's just easier instead of having um, bone against the bone. So I'm going to put the pillow between the knees, the cushion between the knees, and then what I'm going to do is trying to press into the pillow and hold the pressure. So I'm going to squeeze into the pillow, I'm going to hold it for five, four, three, two, one, I'm going to release the pressure. Then again, I'm going to hold it. It's done for seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. I'm going to ease the pressure. I'm going to go for nine, press and hold. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one is in back. I'm going to drop down to seven again. Squeeze and hold. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one is the pressure. Last time, back to five. Squeeze and hold. One, two, three, four, five, and release. I'm releasing the inner thighs, a little bit more connection through the inside of the leg. What I want is the same, but on the outside. So I'm going to switch for the band. I'm going to tie the band around the legs. So if I'm seated, I can even hold it with the arms, or I just can be lazy and tie it around. So I can put a little knot or a little bow in place so to keep it there so that it doesn't come undone. The strap goes as well, it's good as well. If you're using the strap as so one of the solid ones, I will keep it a little bit looser so I can still push out um, and I, I get a little play with the strap so it's not too tight. I'm going to take a deep breath in and then this time I'm going to push out with the knees. So I'm going to try and open the leg, out as much as I can. I'm going to hold that pressure again. Five, four, three, two, one. I'm going to relax. I'm going to try again. This time I'm holding it for nine. So pushing out into the band, holding. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and Relax. I'm going to drop back down to seven, pushing out, hold. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and relax. Last time, I'm going to go for five, push out, hold. One, two, three, four, five, and Release. Undoing the band, pushing the band out of the way into one side. 
Hopefully, a little bit more connection into the side of the hip too, to so see if I can now control the leg a little bit better. I'm going to focus just on the right side. I'm going to start going into a little knee drop. So I'm going to open the right leg out to the right, as if I was trying to pull against the band. And then I'm going to squeeze the leg back in as if I was trying to press into the ball. So I'm going to open the leg out to the right as if I was pulling against the band and then pushing the leg back in as, I was, as if I was trying to squeeze into the ball. So keeping the movement going, same as usual, guiding with the hand if I feel that I need a little bit of guidance to encourage the leg to move on the way out and move to come back. So it doesn't matter the size of the movement, it could be big, it could be small, um, it doesn't really matter. Just to see if I can imagine the two sets of pulleys, one on the side of the hip, one on the inner thigh, that are trying to pull the leg in and out, as if I was working on a little puppet. If you're laying down, remember, make sure that it's the leg that is moving into the hip socket, it's not your hips that are rocking to the side, so I'm not twisting my pelvis. I'm going to try two more. So I'm going to open. And close. Last one. Open. And close. Relaxing the leg, releasing the hip. Focusing the same on the left side. So I'm going to try and pull out as if I was trying to stretch the band out. And then back in as if I was trying to squeeze the ball between the knees again. So I'm going to pull it out. And then squeeze it back in again. So noticing difference between this side and the other. This leg might move better, the movement might be a little bit um, more jumpy, might be smoother. I might need to use my hand to guide it one way or both ways. Same as on the other side, see if I can just uh, think of a little release into the hip socket. And then see if I can picture myself puppeting that leg. For Three, two, last one, and raising back, relaxing the hip, raising the leg. So it's a little bit of a lateral control. I'm going to give the legs a little rest. I'm going to focus on the shoulder, focusing on the arm. I'm going to try and do the same. It's a little bit of a lateral control. So I'm going to, if you are um, lying down, I want you to roll over onto your side. If you're sitting up, it doesn't matter. I'm going to sit in the center and then open and close with the same side. Setting up before opening and closing doors. So I'm going to bend the knees, especially if I'm laying down. Knees are together. In the bottom arm, I'm going to reach it right through. So I'm resting on the back of the shoulder, using a little pillow or a block under the head. If I feel that my neck is not comfortable, it feels as if the weight of the head is really pulling it down. It doesn't feel right. And then focusing on the right arm or focusing on the top arm, I'm going to start raising that arm up and towards the ceiling. Think of the shoulder and the back moving together. So I'm going to rotate and open. I'm going to pose it slightly at the back and then imagine a little wave at the back. So I'm going to try and bring the arm a little bit closer to the head, down a little bit closer to the hip. And then I'm going to try and find that halfway point where I feel that the stretch across the front of the chest is the best. I'm going to hold it there for five seconds. Five, 
four, three, two, one, and then I'm going to close back to center. Then I'm going to repeat it again. So making sure that the arm doesn't rest on the floor. So I'm going to rotate and open to the right. I'm going to hold it there. I'm going to wave the arm down slightly, up slightly until I feel that the stretch across the chest is the best one. And then holding it there, five, four, three, two, one, and release and back. Returning the arm, last time. I'm going to open that door, turning the ribcage, turning the head. I'm going to go for that little wave up and down, finding the best position for the arm, and then holding it there. Shoulder down, chin is still lifted if I'm sitting. Five, four, three, two, one, and release and back. Raising the shoulder, relaxing the arm. If you're laying down, I want you to roll over onto the other side, stepping the same position on the other side. If I'm sitting up, I might adjust myself and put space, the position of the leg. And then the same as before, the top arm, I'm going to reach it to the front, taking a deep breath in as I breathe out, I'm going to start to rotating and opening the arm out to the side. I'm going to hold the deck, little wave down. Little wave up to see if I can find that stretch. Dropping the shoulder, lifting the chin if I'm seated. Five, four, three, two, one. Ease and back to center. Little rest for the arm if I need to. And then I'm going to try again. So opening the arm, turning the rib cage. Hold the back. Little wave down, little wave up. See if I can find that halfway point where the stretch is good. Five, four, three, two, one, and coming back. Relaxing the arm, last time. Opening out nice and wide, turning the ribcage, turning the head. Little wave up and down, find the position. Five, four, three, two, one, and release and back. Raising the shoulders, raising the arms. I'm going to give the shoulders a little bit of a rest and then focusing on the leg again this time. Same as I did for the um, knee drop, I'm going to try and see if I can get the Keep flex so this time. Go on, switching on a little bit more. So if you're lying down, you might want to put the pillow or the ball against the right leg so that you don't need to uh, strain the neck or strain the arms or to get your hands on the leg. If you're sitting up, you can do the sign or you can just put the hands directly onto the leg. It's entirely up to you. I'm going to take a deep breath in and at the same time, I'm going to try and push the ball, uh, push the hand into the leg, and then trying to lift the leg up against the hand. So I'm going to try and create a little tension. I'm going to hold that tension. Five, four, three, two, one. I'm going to relax. Then again, I'm going to push down with the hand, lift up with the leg. Five, four, Three, two, one, release. Two more times, pushing down with the hands, lifting up with the leg. Five, four, three, two, one, relax. Last time, so really trying to connect it to the front of the hip, push down with the arms and pull up with the leg. Five, four, three, two, one, and release. Pushing the ball, pushing the pillow to the side, stay with the right leg. Now that I can feel the hip flexors a little bit more, see if I can try and use it better. So I'm going to take a deep breath in, and then as I breathe out, I'm going to try and lift the right foot off the ground. 
and then I'm going to pop it back down. I'm going to lift it up and then pop it back down. So see if I can get into that knee lift on the right side. Now that I can feel where the tension should be. So see if I can try and focus my intention on that tension on those muscles that I can feel burning, I can feel tingling a little bit more at the front of the hip. And then same as I did for the in and out, I might have to use my hands to offer a little guidance. I might need the band around the back of the legs to help me move the legs slightly. I'm going to use the band if I need that support. Five. Four. Three. Two. One, and releasing back, relaxing the hip, releasing the leg. I'm going to repeat the same thing on the left side. So I'm going to place the ball of the pillar between the left thigh and the, um, and the, the arm or both arms. I'm going to take a deep breath in and then as I breathe out, I'm going to push down with the arms, pull up with the leg. One, two, three, four, Five, release that tension, trying again. Pushing down with the arm, pulling up the leg. One, two, three, four, five, release. Two more times. Pushing down with the arm, pulling up the leg. Five, four, three, two, one, relax. Last time. Down with the arms, up with the leg. Five, four, three, two, one, and release. Pushing the ball to one side, giving the leg a little shake if you need to. And then I'm going to go straight up into the knee lift from that left side. So using the strap around the back of the leg, if you need that support, I'm going to pull up that left foot. And then I'm going to pop it back down. Pull up. And then back down. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight, nine, ten, and releasing back, relaxing the hip, releasing the leg. There's a little bit more connection through the front of the hip. I'm going to get back into the arms, onto the shoulder one more time. So I'm going to find a comfortable position and then one arm at a time, I'm going to start raising the right arm up to the front. I'm going to reach it back. So see if you can be aware of the shoulder keeping down and away from your head, down and away from your ears. If you're laying down, making sure that it doesn't feel as if the back is arching to allow that movement into the arm. I'm going to return the arm down and then I'm going to repeat the same thing with the other side. So I'm going to lift up and behind, and then easing back. And again on the right side. And then over to the left. So see if I can encourage that nice flexion, that nice reach through the shoulder, through the arm, making sure that I'm not forcing, so no pain or discomfort. Three, two, one. I want to take the right arm up as far as you can again. 
And then this time I'm going to turn their head and then I'm going to try and look at the right hand. Then I'm going to release back. I'm going to take the left arm up and behind as far as I can. And then turning the head, I'm going to try and look at the left arm. And release them back. Giving the shoulders a little bit of a roll, relaxing the shoulders, releasing the upper back. If you're laying down when you're ready, rolling over onto your side and in your own time, pushing yourself up into sitting. See if you can find that nice upright position. So leaning onto a sofa on the wall, if you need a little support, you're using the hands or the back to give a little support if you need to. Comfortable position for the legs, so the hip flexors are not going to start to crumping up. It doesn't start becoming uncomfortable for the hips or for the knees. And then once that you found that position, I'm trying to picture the seat bends. If I can feet pop land to the seat bends down onto the mat or down onto the chair, and then trying to lengthen the front of the body. So I'm going to try and lift it from the belly, lift it from the chest, lift it from the collarbones, lift it from the chin, looking up, looking back as much as I can. And then I'm going to come forward, trying to lengthen at the back. So I'm going to tuck the chin in, lengthen the back of the neck, roll the shoulders forward, lengthening the upper back. Coming forward a little bit more, see if I can take the stretch down into the lower back too. And then I'm going to reverse again. Coming up into extension, so lifting up as much space in the front as I can. Looking up, looking back. And then releasing, coming forward, tucking the chin in, running the shoulders, running the upper back, running the lower back. And then I'm going back up again. Extending, opening through as much as you can, looking up, looking back. And then releasing forward. One hand to the back, belly, one hand to the back. Take your back. Give yourself a clap for that. Any question or anything as usual, please say. Remember, you need to unmute yourself. <laughs> 